In this video, we're going to be going through an upcoming feature in Kovacs that I think everyone is going to be really excited about. And that is integrated benchmarks. So what, what I'm going to be going through in this is I'm going to be going through the benefits, the UI, the ranking system. We're going to compare it to some other aim trainers, a scenario overview, and kind of like a wrap up and the future of what I think Kovax has a hold and potentially even integrated benchmarks, you know, just road mapping aim trainers generically. So the first thing is the benefits. So one of the key benefits I think is discoverability. This is a big problem in aim trainers in general. Um, doesn't matter which aim trainer you're playing, Kovax, aim lab, aim beast. If you're a new player, you can, you'll just open up. I'll just show an example of what it's like if you're brand new to aim trainers, you'll have this massive list of 20,000 scenarios and then everybody's default position is, okay, I'm just gonna sort by the highest rated. Obviously the highest rated stuff is the best. You know, you've got things like vertical long strafes, bounce when any tracking, jumbo one wall, six targets TE. So it, it kind of is hard for new players to know what they need to invest their time into which is going to be effective for them and that's kind of what drove aim communities to start to exist and drove them to start creating benchmarks and routines to begin with so feeding somebody you know a system that they can just natively invest in that has score targets and rankings is that's built into the software itself and the platform itself is it's extremely beneficial i think people probably overestimate how many people are willing to go out of their way to look for resources outside of the game that they're playing and input their scores into spreadsheets and join these discords and read guides you know like most of us probably are like that but i think a lot of people People won't do that, so they'll never get the full benefit of a name trainer. And the second thing is that I think the biggest value is that it's going to be community driven. And by that, I mean any game that I've ever played for the most part that has the ability for communities to impact its development usually is successful, is more successful than games that don't, whether that's providing third party tools or like APIs and mods and frameworks where people can develop mods because. You know, if you have a software team, they only know what they know. They only have their purview and their perspective of what it's like to create games and what people want. If you support your community, of which the community in the aim training scene is robust, you got RevoSect, you've got Voltaic, you've got PRG, you've got Amers HQ, you know, just go down the list. There's so many different communities out there. So giving them a way to integrate the resources that they built directly into your platform is only gonna benefit everybody. The really big controversial thing I think here is that it's paywalled. I don't know how much it's gonna cost. I don't know how much of a recurring thing it is. I do believe it is going to be a recurring monthly. They might be able to have you pay upfront uh, for an extended period of time, but I do believe it is going to be a continuous access model. So in order to get access to these benchmarks, which I'm showing on screen right now, if you open up the sandbox and you click this little big button on the benchmarks, it will bring up a screen that's going to ask you to pay however much. And I do believe it's gonna be on a recurring basis. You can't quote me on that because this isn't released yet. This is still in beta state. I'm pretty sure that's how it's gonna work. And my assumption is that that's gonna to be to pay for the ongoing development and future integration of other benchmarks into into the UI itself. To my knowledge, so it says right here, uh, more benchmarks coming soon where it says that, that is in all likelihood, they're gonna have ways for other uh, benchmark creators like Voltaic and now Revisect has exclusivity with AimLab, so they won't get it, but to work with the developers to integrate their benchmarks into this. So right now you have the ability just to play the ones that they developed, but they're gonna have the ability, I assume, this will be like a drop down where it says more benchmarks coming soon, and then you get to select the benchmarks that you wanna play. So, and this is the UI, I'll just, I'll just show this real quick because we were just talking about it. It's it's pretty straightforward. It kind of shows you your overall global rank here, and then it's got it broken out by aim mechanic type, which most people have agreed on, I would say. So normally there's static clicking, dynamic clicking. There's uh, target switching is normally broken out into uh, flicked speed target switching and track target switching or evasive target switching. 
So normally those are the six that you see, but I can understand they probably want to get movement in there. So that's why they just have switching, but it shows you at a high level, like what your rank is uh, within each of the categories and then an overall rank based on how you're performing in each of the scenarios. And, you know, if you click on each one of the scenarios, it'll kind of show you your progression um, in the past few times that you played it. The UI's pretty nice i would say like if i were to rate it i would say it's you know maybe three to four out of five it's a little blocky and clunky but i mean kovacs in itself it's always kind of been like that and then you can go into the info and it'll show you kind of the score targets for each one of these types of scenarios and each of their groups and it's broken out you know you can see the exact scores that are applied and i assume this stuff is going to get updated and it'll even kind of like walk you through a little bit of a description associated with each of the um, scenario types that you see. Well, I just went ahead and talked about the ranking too, but there's 19 ranks in total from what I could see, if I can count correctly. And it's really just, you know, bronze, silver, gold, plat, diamond, master, grandmaster, which is reminiscent of the original kind of Voltaic benchmarks. Um, that's also, I believe, how Ambies works. Um, and then they just kind of like break them down into subsets within each of those high level categories. I mean, me personally, like, I think a simpler ranking system is better. I think some people get like super crazy with these. Like they start talking about like, you know, different gems and like sandstone and ruby and all this shit. And I'm just like, whoa, like calm down. Like how many gems are there? Like people are playing too much Stardew Valley. Uh, comparison to other aim trainers, I'm going to pull up the aim lab one real quick just so you can see it. Um, right now, uh, this is the easy one because it's the one that's the least developed. Right now, aim lab, I'm pretty sure only Voltaic has direct integration with their benchmark screen. And it's still, I mean, aim lab is always, it's a free aim trainer. So they're always in development. That's just how it's been and that's probably how it's going to be for a very long time you just kind of got to wait uh for them to release information and new features so we'll take a look real quick and it's it's not real like if you look up here there's no like benchmarks button um so you get a custom or is it under events okay there it is events benchmarks and then you've got the voltaic benches so you can choose between intermediate and advanced and then you can play that it'll keep track of your rank and then it spits out a card for you if you go through them. And I think that they update them based on the season. And I think Reva Sect is planning on doing some kind of similar type of thing, some kind of in integration with the benches so that if you click on benchmarks, you'll have Reva Sect and Voltaics available to you. But as you can see, there's no like central screen that has like your score targets that has the metrics that shows you your progress it's just kind of like a, a flat kind of card and that just displays your rank and your and your score and if you play the tasks there's no easy way to see how far away you are like just stopping and saying like okay i want to go back and show the benchmark so that you can see like what the targets are and you can't even see like where the next ranks are and so it's just a little it, it, you know it's not full featured yet i'd say it still looks pretty good like they're treating it like an event like to me which to me tells me that they're kind of like demoing a features so it's still not quite full featured yet i would say i'm gonna close out of that let's pull up the aim beast one so this is what aim beast looks like aim beast is has i want to say out of all the aim trainers Aimbeast probably invests the most time into their UI and to the performance of the engine and like the user experience. And so they have a direct like ranked integration. They've got the beginner, intermediate and advanced. So out of all of the aim trainers right now, Aimbeast has the most robust ranked system. It's got global ranking. Um, it's got leaderboards that you can look across. I will say like, I think that there's maybe too many scenarios. Some people like that, some people don't. You can see like where you sit compared to everybody else, including who's that fat cock Tom, whoever that is, but he's always like number one everywhere as a fat cock, I assume. Otherwise he wouldn't have a name like that. So, and they have it breaking out into clicking, tracking, and then switching. Like they do six and six for clicking and tracking, and then they just have four switching. These are probably the most difficult scenarios that you'll play. I think most of these, from what I've heard, and people in chat can verify, I think that all of them are made by Mad Badman or curated by Mad Badman. And he is kind of like notorious for being extremely 
reactive heavy uh, in his style. So, um, but it is kind of neat. You know, you can see your global rank. You can see how it's broken out into each of the three main categories. Um, it's got, you know, you can directly see, yeah, see these ranks like bronze, silver, gold, platinum, diamond, master, grandmaster, almost verbatim the same as how it is in Kovacs. And it's got each of the score targets. I like that the score targets aren't as big of like inflated numbers, keep them smaller. I think that they've been doing this for a couple seasons now. So this is definitely the most curated, I guess you could say, out of all the different aim trainers. And th those are the only real benchmarks I'm I'm aware of that are natively integrated into other. I think maybe like aiming.pro, I, I, I don't know enough about it. All right, let's close out of this. Let's bring up some of the scenarios. Let's do some of the overviews. I, I talked about this a little earlier in the stream, but for the sake of this being a, a video, um, We'll do clicking first. Like this is just your normal, like five target clicking. Uh, the dots are not very precise. And I want to say like most of these scenarios are probably going to be what you would consider throwaway scenarios. They might just be placeholders and they're going to most likely go in and change these by the time anybody's seeing this. Um, the, and the scores might be different. The scenarios might be different. The general sense that I got playing through them is that they are trying to make these accessible to the widest audience without doing uh, the beginner intermediate hard kind of breakouts like aim beast does yeah and the scoring is definitely like starting out in the hundred thousands i mean that kind of reminds me of like old school wow where it's just like major power creep and all you see is like big ass numbers i think they could definitely bring the numbers down more to like aim beast levels um so they've got your normals five uh I target static with kind of like varying bot sizes. They've got your wide wall, you know, which most people are going to be, which is more of like an emphasis on the horizontal movements. By the way, anybody's tried to like talk and uh, aim train at the same time, like shit is rough. So most of them have reloads. Um, most of them are kind of like bigger bots. And like I was mentioning before, with the, uh, the tracking type scenarios, you're going to see the headshot multipliers uh, come into play. So this is where they want people to be able to play it of different levels. And they have some dynamicism in the kind of the tracking movements, but I'd say most people who have played other Kovac scenarios, you know, like unpredictable strays, for example, might look at this and be like, oh, this is good or like gliders. You know, there's a lot of like smooth and strays. There's a lot of great scenarios out there to pick, but I think that they specifically wanted to try to pick scenarios that they could present across a variety of skill levels and allow ways to score points, even if you can't, you know, for example, Let's say you're only targeting body. I, I don't know why that would be the case, like with this type of narrow of a bot, because the head is not that much smaller, but they basically just wanted a way to present the same scenarios to different skill levels of players. And we've got air tracking. That that didn't feel terribly reactive, by the way, but um, air tracking, which is just air. I mean, anybody's ever seen, and it's a fat air, meaning a, a big target. And there's no multiplier because you can't really make a multiplier bot like on this one. That would be kind of odd. And this is a clicking bounce, like I was saying. This is uh, kind of reminds me of one of the scenarios in the PRG Apex routine with the the headshots, but it's a 180 and it's varying levels and it's uh, bigger bots and less reactive bots. But as you can see, like you have the option to click the head, and you have the option just to hit the bean, the bean bag, as I'm calling it, and it's still a one click kill no matter what. See, so yeah, I could just only focus on the, the bean bags, or you can just go for headshots if you want. And obviously you'll get higher scores if you go for the headshots. So again, it's that accessibility across varying uh, skill levels. And then you've got your Passu type. Uh, I like this, by the way, clicking dodgy. That's a good name. This is your Passu type, but also doesn't have a multiplier. Like this is just straight. And this is like a 180. But with also it's got some Z movement a little bit, not a lot, but enough to make it like present. So then you've got smooth vertical tracking, which is kind of like a glider S bot. Uh, again, it's kind of fat. And then you get the headshot multiplier, which you can go for. Then you have the smooth tracking one. 
which is a gauntlet style and it's just like a slower version of the reactive uh tracking that i was looking at a little earlier basically same concept though it's got eight bots you have to kill all the bots in order to finish the scenario and however long it takes you so it's like a time attack so it's very similar to any gauntlet style that people are used to in the switching i think that they wanted to introduce like a humanoid type bot just to like show off the fact that they exist Kind of like the more evasive switching type scenario. And then there's the speed one after this. It's kind of cool because you could see the image of the bot like around the humanoid a little bit. This almost reminds me of KVA switching. It's just without the forward and back movement. Then you've got the switching spheres, which is like box pretty much. But it also has a little bit of verticality. And I don't know if that's on purpose. So maybe it's more like Psalm. Yeah, and it's got the cool little planets in the background and all of these little sweet little pillars and stuff. So kind of showing off the map, making a little bit, I think, like the new features in the maps. And then you've got the movement scenarios. So this is kind of like LG C3, really. So anybody who's played those, kind of familiar with it. And the movement scoring is just based on distance traveled. So you can move however you so choose. And the last one is the bounce, which is the bounce. This is like a CT Dodge Park. It's almost verbatim. It's like a 360 version. It will penalize you if you keep going in the same direction for too long. But you're not like kind of forced to have an awkward strafe pattern like you are in some of the other like circle strafe type scenarios. And again, I think these are just like meant to be more accessible for the newer players as well as like the more intermediate to uh, advanced players. That's that part. And again, I don't think that those things are going to be permanent. Um, I have no reason, no basis uh, to believe that. But my assumption is that they're going to be taking feedback from people that are doing the beta and people that um, once they do the open beta and kind of like modifying it as, as fit. But if I'm guessing like one of the primary criteria that they're going to be looking for is scenarios that anybody can execute without having to separate them into beginner and immediate advance like they do in Aim Beast. So that's that's the main thing I wanted to talk about the future of this and and how benchmarks are going to better integrate. I think what aim trainers are going to be going after or should be going after is the untapped market segments of uh, users that aren't already kind of like aim trainer mains um, people that have kind of like heard about aim training and are aware of it on the periphery and might be skeptical of whether or not it's valuable for them and kind of taking all of the community features that have been built outside of aim trainers and try to natively integrate them into the platform itself and present it to them in an accessible way meaning that they can open it up and um, be directed to it without making it too clunky um, i think that's where they're going to be going because there's a large, I've, I've been saying this for a while, there's a large untapped market segment, in my opinion, of people that could be users of aim trainers that, you know, the, the devs don't really go after yet. It's just going to keep growing. I think aim training is just going to keep growing as a, as a field. There's a lot of, surprisingly enough, there's esports organizations that are going to be spinning up. There's academic institutions and journals that are starting to spawn um, where they're trying to do research on the value of aim training as a part of like overall regimen um, for like coaching and like sports psychology, physiology. The more that aim trainers can kind of get themselves out there and you know aim lab does a good job of this with like tournaments uh for example get themselves out there as a a meaningful like market segment and not just i mean i just saw that that manga like featured kovacs which i thought was entertaining like a, a normal part of everybody's lives that is into fps gaming but also potentially even spread into other markets where like micro is needed where mouse control is valuable it's just going to keep growing and this is just one one part of it i think is these uh these benchmarks in the native integration so